Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to be discussing rational functions and asymptotes. Let's do an example of graphing a rational function. The directions say to sketch f of x equals x over x squared minus 4. Let's work through it. Solution. So to graph rational functions, basically you have to find all of the intercepts and asymptotes and then plot points if you still need some extra help. So this one is going to require a little bit more work. Let's start by finding the y-intercept. So to find the y-intercept, we always plug in 0. So it'll be f of 0, which is equal to 0 over 0 squared minus 4. And whenever you have 0 up top, the whole thing is just 0. In this case, when x is 0, y is 0, and so the y-intercept is 0, 0. I'm going to put this in a box because we're going to use it to help us graph. Let's find the x-intercept. In this case, the x-intercept is actually the same. The general procedure for finding the x-intercept is you basically take your entire function, so x over x squared minus 4, and then you set it equal to 0. Whenever you have a fraction equal to 0, the numerator is automatically 0. So in this case, we just get x equals 0. So the ordered pair is the same. When y is 0, x is 0, so we still get 0, comma 0 as our x-intercept. In this particular problem, the degree in the numerator here is 1. In the denominator, it's 2. So whenever the degree is bigger on the bottom, we have what's called a horizontal asymptote, and it's always 0. So again, if the number on the bottom is bigger, if the exponent uh, is bigger than the one on the top, the biggest one, the degree, then you get y equals 0. If instead, let's just say for example it was 3x squared plus 1 over 5x squared plus 2. In this case, when the numbers match, you have 2 and 2, you would get an HA of 3 over 5. It would be the ratio of the leading coefficient. So if it's bigger on the bottom, you get y equals 0. Whenever they match, you get the ratio. In any case, in this problem, we have y equals 0. As far as the vertical asymptotes, to find those, you simplify first if possible. We can't really simplify in this problem. Nothing cancels. And then you set the bottom equal to 0. So x squared minus 4 equal to 0. We can solve this by either factoring or adding 4. Let's go ahead and add 4. So x squared equals 4. And then we can take the square root of both sides. That's going to give us a plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus 2. Those would be our vertical asymptotes. We've got our intercepts. We've got our asymptotes. We're ready to attempt to draw the graph. I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to write down the function again because we're going to need it. So I'm going to write it over here on the left. We had f of x equals x over x squared minus 4. Okay, and let's go ahead and attempt to draw the graph. I'm going to draw it over here on the right. So there's our y-axis. There's our x-axis. So we have x and y. And basically now what you do is you just plot what you have. So for example, we have a y-intercept and an x-intercept of 0, 0. So that's going to be here at the origin. And then we have asymptotes. So y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. We have a horizontal line at y equals 0, which is basically on the x-axis. You can see it here by this red dotted line in the graph. And then we have two vertical asymptotes, 1 at 2 and minus 2. These are vertical lines. I'm going to use tick marks, 1, 2. And then here's our first vertical asymptote. This one is x equals 2. And then 1, 2. Here's our other vertical asymptote. This is x equals negative 2. Now the problem is we don't know where to draw the graph. So we're going to need some test points to help guide us. Let's start by plugging in a number over here, like negative 3. So f of negative 3 is equal to negative 3 over negative 3 squared minus 4. Let's see, that's going to be negative 3 over negative 3 squared is 9, so 9 minus 4. You get negative 3 over 5. So when x is negative 3, the y value is negative. That's the key. That means it's going to be down here, and this is the general shape it's going to have. You're wondering how I know it's going to have that general shape. 
it's basically because it has to approach the asymptotes. And so that's what it's doing here. Let's pick a number over here about negative 1. So f of negative 1. What's that going to be? So we're going to get negative 1 over negative 1 squared minus 4. That's negative 1 over 1 minus 4. That's negative 1 over negative 3. That's going to be 1 over 3. Wow. A lot of work for just a negative 1, right? <laughs> That's positive. So it's going to be positive up here. Okay, it's going to be positive. That means the graph has to approach the asymptotes up here. So it's going to look something like this. Okay, but it's going to touch here at 0, but we don't know what it's going to do yet. Is it going to bounce or is it going to cross through? So here's how we find that out. We'll plug in 1, so f of 1, it's going to be 1 over 1 squared minus 4. That's 1 over minus 3. So that's negative. So now we know it crosses. It's going to cross and it's going to look something like this because it has to be negative. Wow, it's really approaching that asymptote. There we go. That's a pretty good graph. <laughs> so let's do f of 3. If you're not artistic, it's a little bit harder. So some people are very good at drawing graphs. So 3 over, then we have 3 squared minus 4. So 3 is over here on the right. This is 3 over 9 minus 4 is 5. So it's positive. So it's going to be up here. Wow, what a beast. So this was definitely uh, not the easiest problem, right? Not the easiest problem. It took some work. Uh, but that would be the graph of uh, our rational function. Pretty intense. So just a quick recap of this problem. You basically find all the intercepts and asymptotes. And then you do your graph and then plot numbers if you need to figure out uh, you know, where the graph actually is. Is it down below or is it up top? And then you just connect the dots. Let's go ahead and finish up with something that's actually easier. Let's just go over uh, more knowledge of asymptotes. So our example is to find the asymptotes of f of x equals x squared plus 2 all over x minus 1 solution. Let's start with the vertical asymptote because that's the easier one. To find the vertical asymptote, you simplify first if possible. There's nothing that cancels. Then you set the bottom equal to 0, so x minus 1 equals 0. And so we get x equals 1, and that's our vertical asymptote. Pretty easy. As far as horizontal asymptotes, this doesn't have any horizontal asymptotes. But it does have something else. It has something called a slant asymptote. It's also called an oblique asymptote. And we know that because the degree in the numerator is exactly one bigger than the degree in the denominator. Whenever it's exactly one bigger, you have what's called a slant asymptote. To find it, you use long division. So you write down your x minus 1, and you write the little division symbol. Then we have x squared plus 0x plus 2. I like to put placeholders for missing powers of x. It makes it easier. And then you start the process. What do you multiply by x in order to get x squared? Well, x. And then I like to write it above the placeholder like that. Then you multiply. x times x is x squared. x times negative 1 is negative x. Then you subtract. Some people change the signs. I put parentheses and a giant minus sign. And then add. x squared plus negative x squared is 0. 0x zero plus x, right? The plus x is x. And then you bring down the 2. Then you start the process again. What do you multiply by x in order to get x? Well, 1. Then 1 times x is x. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Parentheses, giant minus sign, then you add x plus negative x is 0. 2 plus 1 is 3. So our function can actually be written now as the quotient, which is x plus 1, plus the remainder, which is 3 over the divisor, which is x minus 1. And the slant asymptote in this case is y equals x plus 1. It's always going to be your quotient. Thinking is, as x gets really, 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 really big, as x approaches infinity, this piece here, 3 over x plus 1, basically approaches 0. And your function approaches the slant or oblique asymptote. A really cool idea. Hopefully you've learned some math in this video. And if you feel you have, Make sure to check out Chegg for more videos. Until next time, good luck.